I've had this thing for a year now, and if you're thinking of buying the 16-inch MacBook Pro, but you're still confused about it, you need to watch this video. This beast of a laptop has been the centerpiece of my production process in this business for the last 12 months. It set me back an eye-watering, hang on, £3,699. And that means it's the most expensive computer I've ever bought. It replaced this, which is my beloved M1 Mac Mini. And if truth be told, I didn't need to replace this. But I'm a tech YouTuber, and tech YouTubers who don't have expensive MacBook Pros, well, they're not tech YouTubers. But if truth be told, I could still be using this for my video editing. So that's the first thing you need to know about the 16-inch MacBook Pro. You might not need it. But if you've been umming and erring about buying one of these for yourself, I totally get it. It's a lot of money. I've got a few things I've learned in over 12 months of ownership. Firstly, a quick word from today's sponsor, Ugreen. I'm a massive fan of Ugreen's accessories, and this wonderful little 65 watt desktop charger has been a bit of a revelation. I've been using this on my production desk, it's sitting neatly beneath the monitor on my little monitor riser, and it's just such a convenient way to charge up to four things at once. And you get four ports, you get two USB-C ports which are capable of 65 watts each, and then two USB-A ports which are capable of 22.5 watts each. And depending on how many things you plug into this at once, it will automatically distribute the power to best charge each of those devices. And it does all of this via GAN technology, which is the sort of thing that you want in these devices. It just means they're very small, as you can see, they're also silent, and they're completely safe. It's just such a brilliant, convenient, neat way of charging things. I've got the bigger brother of this over on my messy setup desk, which charges loads of things at once. That has been brilliant, this has been brilliant, and the best news is that Ugreen are running some very tasty Black Friday deals at the moment, so check out the links in my description. So if you've been thinking about buying the 16-inch MacBook Pro for a little while now, and you've pretty much worked out all of the questions that you had in your head, I've got some very good news. You will not be disappointed by this laptop. So if that's you, you can actually stop watching this video now and go and buy one. Honestly, I don't mind. I mean, come back if you want and perhaps subscribe just to say thanks. But trust me, you will not be disappointed with your purchase. However, if you're still not quite ready to part with all that money, you've probably got a few questions. Is it too big and heavy? <sighs> Has the keyboard been fixed? Is the notch really annoying? What's the battery really like? Let's start with the size. It is a big laptop. And no, I don't need to go to the gym more. I know people have suggested that in the past. It's just very big and very cumbersome if you do a lot of traveling. So if you fly a lot or you go on trains a lot or you do a lot of work in coffee shops, this is gonna be too big. When it's in here, when it's docked next to the studio display over there, it's fantastic because I'm not carrying it around. But when I'm trying to rest it on a seat tray on a train, it's just really annoying. And I haven't really found a table yet in a coffee shop where I can put the MacBook Pro down and my coffee next to it. So if the size is bothering you before you've even bought this thing, go and check it out in the store. When it comes to the keyboard, if you're still saddled with that horrible butterfly thing from a few years back, I've got some good news. That has gone. The new MacBook Pros have a proper scissor switch keyboard and it is wonderful to type on. I put up with that butterfly keyboard for many years as well. It was a horrendous experience. It is a distant memory. The notch, you do not notice it whatsoever. People who are still moaning about the notch need to do some proper work because as soon as you start using this thing, the notch disappears. As for the battery life, it is fantastic. The standby time goes on for days and days and days and days, but it's the in-use time that is the most impressive thing. And it has got to the stage with this laptop where I forget it's not plugged in. So if I'm doing a 4K video edit in Final Cut Pro, I can sit there for hours on battery power. And this has a massively positive impact on the ownership experience because you just spend so little time thinking about where the next PowerPoint is. You just don't think at all about the battery. If the size isn't an issue for you, I'd argue that the battery life on the 16-inch MacBook Pro is one of the main reasons to go for the big one. The other thing I would like to mention is the display, which is absolutely amazing. It's hands down the best laptop display I've ever used. If you put all the silly names to one side, the XDR stuff, it's just a very, very sharp, very bright, wonderful display to work on. The only thing I'd say is that ProMotion is a bit of a non-event. It's certainly not as noticeable or as beneficial as it is on the iPhone and the iPad. Just bear that in mind. 
Let's talk about performance. Now, when I bought this, I spec'd up everything apart from the unified memory and the storage. So I took the unified memory to 32 gigabytes, not 64, and I went as far as two terabytes on the storage. So what I ended up with, and I need to remind myself of this, was the M1 Max chip with the 10 core CPU and the 32 core GPU. And if there's one thing I've learned in the last 12 months, it's that this laptop is more powerful than I ever thought it would be. I just didn't anticipate how hard it would be to make this thing so Sweat. The fan very rarely kicks in, and when it does, it's incredibly quiet. I just think back to my Intel 16-inch MacBook Pro, which was like an aircraft carrier. On that laptop, you only had to open a Word document for it to sound like it was taking off. This is nothing like that. I'm not doing really complicated 8K edits on this thing, but I am using 4K 10-bit 422 footage from this camera. That's fairly chunky stuff, and it will put a lot of computers to task, but it barely touches this 16-inch MacBook Pro. And this leads me to an inevitable conclusion about this laptop. It's more powerful than most people need. And this is a wonderful thing because it means you can save some money. As I've always said, if you do the sort of work that needs loads of GPU cores, loads of unified memory, plenty of internal storage, you know that's the case. But if that's not you, and if like me you're perhaps doing 4K video editing or fairly normal audio production, development stuff that isn't particularly intensive, then again, you know that's the case. Save yourself some money. You might want that all singing, all dancing M1 Max chip with 64 gig of unified memory and loads of storage, but do you really need it? And yes, there's the whole thing about resale value in the future and buying something that will last you many, many years, but we've reached that stage now with Macs where what you think you need isn't what you need. You can actually spend a lot less and still get that very good resale value and loads of years of use. So if I were you, I'd get the M1 Pro version and save yourself some money. Thank me later. As much as I love and I'm impressed by this 16-inch MacBook Pro, it is becoming more of a burden the more I travel. I am travelling more now for this business, and as mentioned earlier, I can't fit this on any table that I can find when I'm out working on the road, and it is very heavy in my backpack. So although I'm not completely committed to this plan at the moment, I am thinking that when the M2, or the rumoured M2-powered MacBook Pro arrives early next year, hopefully, I'll probably go for the 14-inch version. This big beautiful, insanely powerful laptop is the most impressive I've ever owned. It's just not for me. At least I don't think it is. I'm so indecisive about this. I need your help. Have you got a 16 inch MacBook Pro? If so, is it too big? Is there anything about it that's making you think I wish I had the 14 inch version? Let me know in the comments. However, if I've answered your remaining questions about the 16 inch MacBook Pro and you're ready to buy it, I go right back to what I said at the start of this video. If you do that, you will not be disappointed. And if you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to a video I made recently where I go into my current daily tech carry.